In this episode of the House of Hacks, I'm going to show how to operate this old Grayflex camera. Hi makers, builders, and photographers, Harley here. In this previous episode, I first showed this new to me camera, the, explained how the light travels through it, and did a little cleaning on it. I mentioned in that video that I was going to be taking it out, run some film through it, and would report back on how it turned out. I tried taking video out in the field, but it didn't work out too well logistically, so I'm going to do this episode here in the workshop. Today I'm going to talk about the actual operation of this camera. I'm going to talk about how to load the film, how to set the exposure, both the aperture and the shutter speed, how to take a picture, and finally take a look at some of the first images out of this camera in over 50 years. If at any time you want to skip to a specific portion of this video, just click the appropriate menu item over here. This camera model had available to it different backs. Each back took a different type of film, which allowed you to change film types from one image to the next. You could also have multiple backs of the same type and put different types of film in them. This allowed you to shoot the same type of film, but just different varieties like black and white in color or different film speeds. Mine came with a carrier for 120 film, which is really nice because 120 film is still made and manufactured. It's readily available. Amazon carries it. You can get it at your local camera store. To start loading the film, you move this little bar, which frees up the carrier, the back, to come off. And this is what a 120 back looks like. To open this up, you pinch the silver bar, silver bar together and it just opens up like this. Inside here there's a film carrier, like so, and there's a place for the supply reel. The film comes around here. This, this is what faces the shutter, rolls around, goes onto a take-up reel. The take-up reel, when a roll of film is finished, just free rolls forever, like this. And when you want to put in a new roll of film, you just manually click this over to the S position. You can hear that click. And now you're ready to load a roll of film. So we'll take this film out of the box and it comes in a, in a airtight, air um, light tight packaging just to keep the film fresh. There's a piece of tape here. You just break the seal across here. Sometimes it's easier said than done. Oh, this one just peels off. That's kind of nice. Different film, different types of film, or different brands of film. We'll do that a little differently. The film goes in here, and it just kind of the spring-loaded. So you just put that in like so. You want to make sure that this is su such that the film emulsion, this black part, is coming out from the bottom like this. This, this is so when it wraps around like this, it's facing into the camera. It then rolls around and you just put this little, this little uh, piece of flap in the slot like so, and you just wrap it up. And see how that slipped out? I've had that happen before. You want to make sure that when you start rolling this, that it's actually engaged. There's nothing more frustrating than to think you've shot a whole roll of film only to open this up and find it still at the starting. There we go. Once, once we have it loaded on about one roll like that, we want to put it back in, back in here like so. And then we just want to roll this around until it gets to one. And what it stops when it hits to one. And this is now, put it right back on the back of the camera. The camera is now loaded with film and ready to shoot. Exposure is made up of three things, film speed, aperture, and shutter speed. This is commonly called the exposure triangle. 
We're going to talk about how to set this on the Grayflex. First, film is measured in ISO units that typically have values of 100, 200, 400, and so forth, kind of powers of two. In digital cameras, you can change this on the fly from one image to the next, and you can also have partial um, settings on the ISO numbers between those powers of two numbers. With film, each roll of film has a specific value, and so once you put a roll of film in the camera, that's what you have to work with until you take that film out. That on the gray flex is a little bit different because the backs are interchangeable. So if you have multiple backs, you can put different film in each back and change the backs from one image to the next if you so desire. The second leg of the exposure triangle is the aperture. This controls how much light comes through the lens and is measured in units called f-stops. Each f-stop either doubles or halves the amount of light coming through the lens. The larger the number, the smaller the hole and the less light that comes through, but the greater the depth of field. On the other hand, the smaller the number, you get a larger hole which lets more light through, but you have a shallower depth of field. The aperture can blocks off this light with vanes that are controlled by either rings or levers that are outside around the, around the lens. Different lenses have different ranges. On this particular lens, it opens up to f5.2 and closes down to f22. The last leg of the exposure triangle is the shutter speed. This controls how much of the light that's going through the aperture actually makes it through to hit the film. In most cameras, there's a dial that you turn to set the shutter speed to what you want it to be, and the camera just takes care of the rest. The gray flex, however, is quite different. It has a long piece of fabric in it with four different slits in it of different sizes. This fabric is rolled up on rollers that are then attached to some springs. The springs can have variable tensions set on them. So to set the shutter speed, you look on the side of the camera on a chart that has all the different shutter speeds on it. You find the shutter speed you want and read across to the left side to find the slit to use and read up the column to the top to find the tension to use. There's then two controls on the camera that you set to these two values. To set the slit's value, first of all, make sure this lever is in the down position. That puts the mirror down and also engages the latch for the winding mechanism. Next, wind this knob until the value that's indicated by the chart shows up in this little window. If you find you've gone too far, you can use this release lever to back up to previous settings. To set the tension value, simply turn this knob on the bottom of the camera. If you find you've gone too far, you can back up by pressing this other little release knob. To determine the proper exposure values to use, you usually use a light meter. This is an older model that's very simple. It has a photo sensor and a meter in it. The meter has a little red indicator on it. And to use it, you simply point at the scene and rotate this dial to line up a green indicator to match the red indicator. You then set the film speed to match what you have in your camera and then directly read out on a chart here that tells you which shutter speed to use for which uh, aperture that you want to use. Very simple to use, never fails, no batteries required. This is a newer version of the same thing. It's bigger, requires batteries, but it also has a few new features. It does have a manual mode on it though, so you can set the ISO on the film and find out what uh, shutter speed and aperture to use to, to get a proper exposure. However, when I'm out in the field taking pictures, I'm always gonna have my SLR with me and it has a built-in meter, so I just use it. I set it to manual mode set the ISO to match the film that I have loaded in the camera, and then center the needle on the meter by changing the f-stop and the shutter speed to be what I want it to be. I can then take a picture, make sure I have the correct exposure that I want in the camera, and then I can just take those three values and apply them on the gray flex and be ready to go. Once you have your exposure values, you're ready to make your image. The first thing, of course, to do is your frame and, and focus. I find it's best to do this with your aperture wide open so you can actually see what you're doing. Focus is controlled by this knob on the side, which all it does is move the lens closer or further away from the film plane. To do, to do both your framing and focusing, you use the viewfinder here on top. And you just look down through here, adjust your, your, fo your frame, and then do your focus. And then once all that's done, then you can dial in your aperture to what's appropriate for this particular image. Once all your exposure values are set, 
your shutter speed and your aperture. You already have your film in there. You're ready to take your image. I find this works best as a four-step dance. You just do each step right in sequence after the other without interruption. Step one is remove this plate from the film. This exposes the film to the inside of the camera. Two is to press the shutter release. It's over on this side. Three is to put the plate back in. And four is to advance the film. I find that if I don't do this each and every time, then I'll forget, a, I'll forget usually either to take this plate out, which results in no image, or I'll forget to advance the film, which results in double exposure. Neither of which you really want. Once all the film has been used, it'll all be on the take-up reel. None will be left on the supply reel. Unlike 35mm cameras where you reverse the film back into the canister, you just leave it on the take-up reel in this one. You take the back off to a darkish location, just like you used to load the film. Open up the back, and on the end of the film there'll be a moisture-sensitive adhesive. Lick that and stick it to the film. That'll keep it from unwinding, coming off the roll and ruining your film. Keep it in a dark location as you take it to your film processor for developing. And finally, take the what used to be the supply reel, it's now empty, take it off, put it in the take-up reel position, and load in a new roll of film, you're ready to go again. I ran a roll of film through the camera and took it to a local lab for processing and scanning. I had no idea what to expect since this is the first film that had been through the camera in over 50 years. I didn't know if it had, might have light leaks or some other problem with the camera that had caused it to fall into disuse. I received the scans via email and opened them up and found them to be all identical. This was pretty surprising since I had done exposure bracketing from one frame to the next and expected to have different exposures. I picked up the film in person a couple days later and sure enough they did have different exposures from one frame to the next. So the camera was working just perfectly. As it turned out the scanner was in auto mode and it had adjusted the exposure on each frame to be what it thought it should be, negating the exposure bracketing that it had done. So the lesson learned is next time I need to have them turn off auto mode if I've done exposure bracketing in order to get the proper exposures on each frame. I used the negative to digital conversion process I described in this video to get digital images that had the correct aspect ratio and exposure values. I'm very pleased with the way these images turned out. be doing more with this camera in the future. I may even do some developing if I do a lot with it. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section below. And subscribe if you're interested in more make-related videos. And here's a playlist of other photography-related videos that I've made. Until next time, go make something. It doesn't have to be perfect, just have fun.